We see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O Canada, we stand on God for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. stand on God for thee. O Canada, we stand on God for thee. Please be seated. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Franco Vaccarino, and I have the great privilege of being the eighth president and vice chancellor of the University of Guelph. And I'm also the new guy in town, like many of you here, so uh, welcome. I'd like to um, take a moment to uh, acknowledge the Atawandaran people on whose traditional territory the University of Guelph resides and offer respect to our Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Métis neighbors as we strengthen our relationships with them. Now, I hope you've had a few great days here, making new friends, getting oriented to the campus. We've been easing you into campus life with all sorts of very cool uh, social activities, including the the pep rally that I was at uh, yesterday was my first uh, pep rally. I was uh, very impressed and uh, a little overwhelmed, but I thought the, uh, it was a terrific group and what a, what a fantastic rally. So today, we are introducing you to the academic side of your time here at Guelph. We welcome you as 2014 incoming students and as the 2018 graduating class. Now, since Saturday's move, you've had the opportunity to learn about the university and all the resources we have to support you in your academic journey. And keep those resources in mind. We have terrific services, staff, volunteers here, and take advantage of them. You've also experienced some of the social life the university community can provide uh, for you. Sports, entertainment, clubs to develop your extracurricular interests, and opportunities to get involved in the campus community. And that's part of that, that special something that University of Guelph very much believes in, and that is education being about the whole person. Today, now with this ceremony, we welcome you to academic life at Guelph. This ceremony, the mace, academic robes, the procession, and order of ceremony, all reflect age-old university traditions representing the privileges and the responsibilities you have accepted by being admitted to this great university. You have the privilege of following your dream, to study what means the most to you, and to discover the power of your new and emerging knowledge. You have the privilege of working with some of the very best faculty, teachers, and researchers, researchers who are absolutely tops in their field. You have the privilege of seeking guidance and advice from peers and professional staff to guide you during your journey. And you also have responsibilities. It is your responsibility to take advantage of the opportunities that, that have been afforded, afforded to you, to show up, to show up for classes, show up for lectures, show up for groundwork and, and study time in the library. It is your responsibility to challenge yourself and those around you. It's your responsibility to look at a question or problem from all angles, 
from all perspectives to try to seek new understanding and new ways of applying your newfound knowledge. You are now being admitted to a community of scholars and learners, and it really is up to you to get the most out of this, what I believe is an extraordinary opportunity you're being offered. I want to share with you what life will be like for you over the course of this semester. Now, when you start classes tomorrow, you may feel a little overwhelmed. Some excitement, a little bit of anxiety. You're trying to find the right classroom, questioning whether you're taking the right courses, and whether uh, wondering how you'll, you'll get all of the readings done by next class and whether you'll make it to the end of the, the, uh, the two day, uh, this two-day week. But I can tell you that by next Thursday, you'll be an old hand. You're going to feel a lot more comfortable. Some of the novelty will settle down. Uh, you'll start to ease into things. Your, ru your routine will be developed, and you'll have figured out ways to manage and schedule your time. In short, you're going to start managing that sense of uncertainty that you're feeling right now. And so it will go for six weeks. And then along comes the end of October in midterms. And you'll again start kind of questioning yourself how, what to study, what's the professor expecting in that midterm paper, what does he or she like to hear. Um, but you will survive that too and learn from the results of your efforts. And then it's, no, it's, it's November and back to the routine of classes. And then you're going to have another upswing, final papers and projects just before the end of term uh, that are due and the exam schedule looming in December. But you'll have learned, remember, you'll have learned from the midterm uh, experience and know how to study better and know how to prepare yourself better. So all of this might feel a little bit much, but remember, by the time December comes around, you will ha have had the advantage of those months of experience leading up to things, and you're going to feel a lot, uh, a lot more comfortable um, with your challenges moving forward. You'll make it through final exams, and then uh, you will go home uh, to your families a little tired, uh, but also feeling a real sense of accomplishment and a real sense of exhilaration as you make it through your first semester. After a couple of days, I'll also predict that when you're back home, you'll, you'll, you'll look forward to returning, You'll start texting, making, uh, making plans for your return, and in January, you're going to come back refreshed and ready to take on a new semester. Now, how can I predict all this? Well, I can predict all this because University of Guelph is known for its outstanding student success rate. We think a lot about the students we admit, and when they're here, we continue to take care of them and make sure that the experience continues to be a positive and successful one in your own journey. And that's because we care about you, and we care about you not just from an academic perspective, but you as a whole person. And uh, we're very aware of the, of the challenges and opportunities across the spectrum as you, as you navigate through your own journey. Again, remember, we have outstanding support services for you as a learner and as a member of this community. Take advantage of them. Find what you need when you need it. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to seek advice and make decisions that are in your best interest. You will be faced with all sorts of choices. And um, you know, as I was going through some notes, uh, some speaking notes, uh, we talk about choices. And for me, what's, what's important for you to remember is make thoughtful choices. Make decisions that work for you and that make sense for you. You come to, uh, to university at a time in your life and development when your minds are open to new ideas and challenges. I encourage you to explore all that comes your way. At no other time in your life will this exceptional set of circumstances come to confluence. So take advantage of your time here. This is a pivotal period in your life when you can become the person you want to be and continue to push your limits and discover what your ceiling really is. And I will predict that you'll discover that ceiling continues to be raised and gets higher and higher as the months and years go by. Set lofty goals maintain high standards, work hard to succeed. You will be challenged, but the journey will be rewarding and it will be well worth your while. So I wish you all the very, very best in your academic uh, endeavors. It's a great uh, group of students. I've had the opportunity to cross paths with uh, many of you um, uh, leading up to uh, today. So the best of luck. And now what I'd like to do is take this opportunity um, to introduce Her Worship, Mayor Karen Farbridge, 
Mayor Farbridge is a tireless champion of this great city, and I'm delighted that her worship is here today to bring greetings. Mayor Farbridge. Thank you, Dr. Vaccarino, and on behalf of the City of Guelph, I'd like to offer once again a warm welcome to you as the university's new president. Um, I'm thrilled to be here, both as the mayor of the city, but also as an alumnus of the, of the University of Guelph, to welcome all members of the entering class. Um, have any of you taken the survey to figure out what kind of griffin you are? Anybody? A couple of you? I'm a happy hippo, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Go look it up. It's actually pretty accurate. Congratulations on your acceptance to the University of Guelph. This university is not simply located in our city. It's a fundamental part of the community's heart and soul. As the entering class, you have all become members of the university community. You've also become part of the broader community of Guelph, and we're very pleased to welcome you. For many of you, this may your, be your first time living away from home. As you begin this phase of your life, it's worth considering the positive impact you can make, not only on the university through your studies, but within the community of Guelph. Students bring energy and creativity to our city. Many also volunteer for local organizations. In fact, student volunteerism at the University of Guelph is among the best in Canada. It's also worth considering how the positive impact the community of Guelph can make on you. So when you need a break from your studies, I encourage you to explore and enjoy all the city of Guelph has to offer, from our parks and our trails to our historic downtown. Some of you may even fall in love with Guelph and decide to stay. That was what happened to me. I have three degrees from the University of Guelph, so I speak from experience when I say that this is a world-class university and a wonderful place to pursue your studies. Now, many of you might think that my background might be in political science because of where I am today. I actually studied fish endocrinology when I was at the University of Guelph, so very different from that. And what that signals, I think, is what you heard from the president, that you will be presented with many opportunities, and it's your, op it's your chance to take those opportunities and see where it, pa where it leads you. So, Imagine what would happen if you committed in this moment today that when you walk out the doors at the end of this ceremony, that you, every door that opened, every person you met, anything that you could go to was an opportunity for you to be the person that you were meant to be, a difference maker. So be a griffin, be a difference maker. Congratulations on your acceptance to the University of Guelph. I wish you a very successful year and a very successful time here at the University of Guelph. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Mayor Farbridge, uh, a great alumna of the University of Guelph, and uh, appreciate your, your thoughtful words of, uh, of welcome and, and advice to the students. Again, let me take this opportunity to congratulate all of you as you been, begin your academic journey. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'm also the new guy here, so if, uh, if you see me wandering around uh, looking lost, I probably am. So, uh, so don't hesitate to point me in the right direction if you, uh, if you know where I'm heading. Um, wish you all the very, very best for a very, very successful year. Thank you very much. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Peter. I'm uh, the Academic and University Affairs Commissioner at the Central Student Association, and I'm here to introduce you uh, the alumni speaker, Kimberly Moffitt. Um, before introducing her, I'll say a few things about the Central Student Association. We are the undergraduate student union on campus, which is independent from the university, and we run campaigns like the Pay More, Get Less campaign for affordable education and against tuition fee increases, the Tap In campaign to end the sale of bottled water on campus because water is a human right, and the No Means No campaign, uh, which we're really promoting this week. Um, promoting uh, consent on campus. But now I'll get on to Kimberly. So Kimberly is a psychotherapist and one of Canada's most experienced TV television experts, or relationship experts. She's the Canadian spokesperson for Match.com and also the proud founder of KMA, KMA Therapy, which is one of the largest therapy practices in Ontario. 
She currently appears on Canada's most watched programs, including Canada AM, CBC The National, E! News, E! Talk Canada, and Breakfast Television. Kimberly is also a graduate from the University of Guelph. In, in 2006, she graduated with an arts degree in music. She completed her master's degree in music therapy from Wilfrid Laurier University, and then began her doctorate in 2008. She just uh, submitted her doctoral uh, dissertation in counseling psychology to Middlesex University, which she completed by traveling back and forth from uh, home to England. So please welcome Kimberly Moffat. Good afternoon. President, VPs, deans and associate deans, distinguished professors, alumni, and students. <laughs> My name is Kimberly Moffat, and I am a proud alumna of the University of Guelph. Welcome to your first day of being a proud future graduate of the University of Guelph. I'm incredibly honored and excited to be here today. To be back in the place where I started my educational career is nostalgic and humbling, and it reminds me of how I began. It brings back a lot of fun memories, but also a lot of memories of hard work. Being back is also an enormous reminder of just how much my life has changed in the eight years since I graduated from Guelph. As many of you know, I've spent my career dedicated to helping people improve their relationships. University is a time that focuses heavily on relationships. It's about the relationship that you have with your knowledge and philosophies. It's about the relationships that you're making right now with your new friends, many of whom will probably be your friends for life. It's about the changing relationship that you have with your parents. But most importantly, university is a place to work on and improve the relationship that you have with yourself which is arguably the most important relationship of all. I'd like to start today by telling you a little bit about my experiences at Guelph and how they shaped my career decisions and outlook on life. Then I'll give you my best advice on how you can use your university experience to better yourself, to grow, and to create the most successful and abundant future that you can possibly have. I would not have believed you if you told me that after graduating in 2006, that only eight years later, I would be up here speaking in front of all of the incoming students. The truth is, when I started at Guelph, I had no idea what my future had in store for me. I changed my major three times before deciding that I wanted to study music. Music was the perfect choice for me because I had already been working as a professional musician, so I figured I couldn't go wrong with that choice. And I was a total perfectionist, so I loved the challenge of hearing or reading something and then working at absolutely perfecting it. But despite how much I loved to study music, it really bothered me that I didn't know what the heck I was going to do after graduation. I was always nervous when people asked me, what do you plan to do with a music degree? The dilemma I had back then was a very similar dilemma to the one that many of the young clients I work with now in my therapy practice face. And maybe some of you are wondering about it too. Where will I go from here? How will I use the degree I've chosen? And how will that translate to a real life job? So how did I go, go from being a music student to the owner of one of Ontario's largest therapy practices? The answer was this, by focusing on the learning, the growth and the experience and using those cues to guide the career. In short, just start by doing what you love. Doing what I loved was making beautiful music. That music led to a Master's of Music Therapy degree, which led to a 1,000-hour internship at CAMH, the Center for Addiction and Mental Health. And that ended up leading to a Doctor of Psychology degree. It's not your responsibility to predict your future career today. Promise me that you'll try not to stress about the end result all the time. Just do what makes your heart feel joyful. Do lots of it. 
and be the absolute best at what you do. Over time, the answer to how that will translate into the perfect career for you will become the most obvious thing in the world. I have a few words of advice that have carried me through my university career. The first is to set goals. A recent study at Harvard University showed that only 2% of their graduating class set goals, but that 2% had amassed over 90% of the wealth. As soon as I read about that study, I decided I wanted to set goals. Um, a goal in university can be as simple as passing a midterm or a final exam. And maybe it can be as long-term as even watching yourself at your graduation or having the hope of getting accepted into a master's program. But nothing is too lofty. The second is get involved and leave your mark in the Guelph community. And no, I don't just mean leaving your name on a stall in the Doogie's bathroom. Guelph is a thriving place that has a multitude of cultural and geographical gems. Through my part-time jobs and volunteer work, I saw another side of Guelph, one that wasn't just in the university bubble. So my best advice is to get out there, meet the residents, volunteer, and get involved in this amazing community. Three, feel lucky and blessed to be receiving one of the greatest privileges of all, the opportunity to earn a university degree. It is the opportunity to immerse yourself in thought, in study, and in creativity. It is the time and the space to fill your mind with everything you could ever want to know and do it with passion. Please relish this opportunity because it may be one of the only times in your life that you have four full years to focus on your education. And finally, it's in all of our best interests to contribute to the University of Guelph's amazing reputation. After all, the university just turned 50. During your lifetime, the U of G will reach its 100th birthday. And I'm sure, <laughs> and I'm sure we'll have reached many more internationally recognized milestones. It is all of our responsibilities to be ambassadors for our alma mater. And that starts today. Now, I'm sure some of you are going to write field-changing academic papers. Some of you are going to travel the world on behalf of the University of Guelph, maybe being professors for other universities. Some of you in this room will become famous. But what can you do today to raise the profile of your future alma mater? Well, you have the greatest power of all. You have the ability to post, to share, to tweet about how amazing this university is. You know that picture you took with the griffin the other day? Well, I bet your friends and family are going to see that on your Facebook page, and maybe they'll even comment about how amazing the University of Guelph is. You can also support your fellow alumni in their endeavors. And if you're looking for a place to start, you're welcome to watch my appearance on Canada AM tomorrow morning at 8.10. And I will be tweeting and posting before and after the event, and I would welcome you to engage with me. I'm also so glad that in a number of years, you'll all be joining me in the alumni family. Being an alumni is for life. It's not just about getting your degree and getting out. You are a member of the club forever. The University of Guelph has consistently been ranked one of the best educational institutions in the country. So when you wear that U of G sweater, it is an instant connection to other alumni, to current students, and even to people who recognize the U of G logo and say, wow, you went there. I love wearing my University of Guelph sweater at home in Toronto because it's always a conversation starter. I would like to conclude this chat with a quote by one of my personal favorite women, Oprah Winfrey. Create the highest, grandest vision possible for your life because you become what you believe. I know that all of you are able to envision and create university experiences for yourself that are fruitful and that you can be proud of. Enjoy every moment of your career as a university student. Don't forget to dream, and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Serge Desmarais. I'm the acting provost and vice president academic here at the university. 
Uh, to begin, I'd like to thank Kimberly for her thoughtful and, uh, um, you know, her speech talked about the degree of engagement that you have to have and your commitment to the university and to your own process. And I think uh, these are very important words as you begin your, uh, your, your next four years. So, here you are today, and many of you must wonder, why did they drag me here? Um, why do, are we at this event where there's people dressed in formal gowns, some of us having very cool hats or goofy hats, depending on how you frame it? What's the purpose and the meaning of this event? As President Vaccarino mentioned, this is the beginning of your academic journey at the university. This event really marks one of the two bookends of your academic process. This is the beginning. You're here today with this formal procession, with people giving you inspiring speeches, with trying to make you understand the connection that you will have to the university during your, you know, your time here. This will be accompanied several years from now, four, five, by the end process, where you will be asked to go to your convocation, where people will be dressed in the same formal gowns, and where you will be presented your degree. This is a deliberate choice to start and initiate your time here as students in your academic process with this formal ceremony. And that we want you to recognize that it is truly the beginning of a process and that the two parts, the two bookends, are important parts of the process within which you're engaging. So welcome here. We're glad to see that you're here. We're glad that you chose the University of Guelph. And on this, may I ask the entering class to please rise. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you these scholars who have enrolled in the University of Guelph and ask that they may be admitted to their various and several undergraduate programs. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in the University of Guelph, I hereby admit you to the University of Guelph. Will members of the entering class please be seated? Hello, I'm uh, Brenda Whiteside, Associate Vice President, Student Affairs here at the University of Guelph, and I join the uh, other members of the platform party in welcoming you to the University of Guelph. Over the last few days, um, hundreds of returning students, staff, uh, faculty, volunteers, all worked to help try to get you comfortable in your living in environment and in your campus. Um, and I ask if you would join me in thanking those individuals for helping you with that transition. Now, as Dr. Vaccarino and uh, Dr. Demare has said that um, today, uh, now we have deans, administrators, vice presidents, a member of our board of governors, our mayor, faculty, staff, coming together to now welcome you to your academic journey. And I urge you, as you have already had numerous people suggest, to take advantage of this, all this institution has to offer. Uh, please engage those on this campus. I um, assure you that your academic journey will be that much richer. You are now a griffin. A griffin is a proud, mythical creature with the head, talons, and wings of an eagle and the body of a lion. When you arrived, you were met by the griffin statue. He sits on a book on the corner of campus protecting knowledge. Those who walk past him and rub his beak will travel along a special pathway to the acquisition of knowledge. As a new tradition, students are encouraged to rub the beak of the griffin, asking for a successful academic year. This needs to be done prior to the start of classes, so if you have not yet rubbed the beak of the griffin, I urge you to do so before tomorrow. On a cautionary note, that luck only works if you also go to class, do your work, do your readings, write your midterms, etc. cetera. Um, you're now a griffin, and you'll soon learn what that means. Dr. Vaccarino talked about rights and responsibilities. 
Griffins care about each other and about their communities. Griffins are respectful and responsible. They look out for their fellow Griffins, and they speak up when they see things that are occurring that are not consistent with the Griffin values. And you, as has been, you've been, been informed, will be a Griffin for life. In fact, when you leave today, members of the University of Guelph Alumni Association will present you with a small group, welcoming you into your beginning journey as part of the extended Griffin family. Please join me in thanking members of the University of Guelph Alumni Association for their participation today. So fellow Griffins, good luck over the next few years. Um, we look forward to seeing you at Convocation three, four, or five years from now, where we will welcome you as graduates into the extended Griffin alumni family. Following the ceremony, there is a barbecue that will be held for all students and guests. This will give you an opportunity to meet with faculty, administrators, and fellow students um, to get to know each other. It will be held on the baseball diamond uh, to your right. You can go through any of the doors here and head up. Um, the vegetarian uh, aisles are the outside aisles on the left or the right. I ask that you please rise and remain standing until the platform party has left the stage. Well, as president, I get the official last word here, and those are this welcome to student ceremony is dismissed. <laughs>